wants to be in pain, especially if it's sciatic pain. So we're not going to let our spine get on our nerves. We're going to strengthen our body so that we can feel strong from the inside out and diminish that pain for good. <laughs> this is part three of the sciatic series. So if you've been following along, you've learned some strength exercises along with flexibility. And this segment will cover some strength and mobility exercises that you can do on your total gym. If you happen to miss the previous segments, please be sure to check them out so you can get the full program details. Now, before we get into the exercises, be sure that you perform each exercise with proper form. So really take time to learn them, feel them in your body, and utilize your breath so that you are allowing that breath to move your body through the motion. So let's get right into the exercises that will help strengthen your spine from the inside out. For the setup, have your incline placed at a low level with your squat stand attached. Now, if you have a Pilates toe bar, you can also use that. So you'll come down to a seated position, feet are at the very bottom base, and your heels are onto the rails. You'll sit at the very bottom of your glide board as well. So as tall as you can get your spine, I want you to pull your navel in and then pinch your glutes so that you are just gently pinching them and that should raise you up just a tiny little bit. So your spine is elongated, shoulders are back. We'll bring our arms either out to the side with our palms facing up, or you can always have them right by your side, having them back behind your hips so that your chest stays lifted. From here, you're just going to tuck your pelvis giving it that little C curve. So you're opening up through the vertebra, tucking through your pelvis, and keeping your core engaged. And then sit right back up into a lengthened spine position. So you're going to tuck again, pull the navel in. You should feel your abdominals contract and lift back up. Now try it with the breath. Exhale as you curl the spine. Inhale as you lengthen and lift. Exhale and curl. Inhale and lift. So those are just some pelvic rocks that you can do to really facilitate the breath with your spine and the movement of your pelvis. And that'll help strengthen them as well as open up through your vertebra. Next is a clam shell. So you'll come into a sideline position, open up through your glide board, place one foot at the bottom base of your squat stand or toe bar, and bring your legs together. You'll open your knees into a clam shell as you move the glide board down the rails. So we open and slide down. We lengthen and close. We open and slide down. We lengthen and we close. Now, if it's too much pressure on your upper body or your shoulder to keep your body lifted, you can always lie down and do the same exercise. Just make sure that you are breathing. You are not putting any pelvic tilt in either direction. You're keeping those hips stacked as the legs move and as the glide board moves. And of course, you wanna make sure that you do this exercise on both sides. Next exercise is opposite elbow to knee. So you'll come into a quadruped's position facing your vertical column. Place one foot so that it is anchored at the bottom of your glide board and the other one is on top of your squat stand. Hands are at the very top of your glide board as well. So as you open up through the glide board, you'll reach the opposite arm. So whatever leg is on top, the opposite arm is reaching. Keeping your body stable and controlled, we reach out, keeping our hips square and elbow comes down towards our knee. We reach out, we exhale in, lengthen, and exhale, contract. <laughs> so you wanna really make sure that you are lengthening through the back of that knee, keeping your body long, and with control each time. Be sure to do this exercise on both sides. Our last exercise is a figure four stretch from a seated position. So again, we'll take our foot at the very bottom of your squat stand, or if you have your toe bar, you can place it onto the middle of the toe bar as well. So from here, you'll bring one knee into your chest. You'll cross it gently on top of your thigh. As you do that, give that knee a slight bend, keeping your spine long. You can brace the knee as well as the shin and the foot, and you're just bending the knee so that you can kind of feel a little stretch position. Roll down through the spine, and then utilize your abs and your breath to roll yourself back up. Bend the knee, straighten the leg, exhale, tuck the pelvis, rolling down and rolling back up. And one more time, bending the knee, pulling it in, feeling that nice stretch, lengthening it out, tugging the pelvis, rolling it down, exhale and rolling it back up. So you wanna really take your time 
as you do this movement, it's not about how many, it's about how many you do that are efficient movement that your spine actually feels the articulation, your core feels it, your hips feel the opening. Yes, it's all good. And be sure to do that one, of course, on both sides. And those are some strength and mobility exercises that you can do on your total gym to help alleviate that sciatica pain. It's really important that you learn the exercises properly so that you perform proper form. So be sure to check out the blog to get the full program details and keep strengthening your spine. Never give up because we never want to let that spine get on our nerves.